I actually studied product design at university. Um, and with that, it was very 3D heavy. So lots of Rhino, SolidWorks um, with, with industrial design. And actually what I found um, in the industry is when I took on my first job with uh, Puma over in Germany, is that um, going from a 3D background, the process for footwear design in particular is, is very kind of 2D orientated. And naturally being new into a job, you want to learn from the experts around you. So you adopt the process that's, that's already there. Um, so over the course of the, of the kind of past year, uh, 10 years working across various brands, I've kind of lost that um, 3D skill set. Um, so discovering Gravity Sketch, a few posts I'd seen on, on LinkedIn of, of this new tool with a VR headset, I thought, why, why not give it a go? It's, it felt like a quite a nice halfway point between technical 3D and iterative sketching. So that's a little bit, bit of context of how I kind of picked up the tool. Yeah, no. And I mean, we hear that all the time, right? Like I'm constantly trying to talk with customers and our community and just get an idea. And it seems like COVID was really one of those big pushes, you know, where people had the time to invest in themselves or to really learn new things and iterate on that design process. So it's cool to hear that. And, you know, I also heard you mentioning, you know, working with Rhino and other tools as well. And I think that's one thing that I just love to call out and love to hear, you know, you mentioned a lot of times people's first like impression of us is like, well, how do you compete with Rhino? It's like, we don't really, it's just another piece of the process that allows you to, you know, kind of in, preserve your design integrity and collaborate and identify those ideas faster. Right. So I'm kind of curious, like when you're thinking about that, what does that look like in terms of, you know, um, like how you're working with others and starting to think about that a little bit? Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good point to raise actually the difference between a tool like Gravity Sketch versus some of the others that are, that are out there, and you know it's, it's one of the only ones that I found really that you can iterate in a bit more of a exploratory way. Um, you know, whereas when you're building something in, in Rhino or, or even SolidWorks or any of the other packages out there, that's more about the kind of the end piece when you already know what the design is and you want to create something for marketing or create a video and that kind of thing. Now, if I was to design in that way at an early stage of the process, I would be investing too much time in trying to get everything exact um you know to the last heel to toe job all the things like that and although it's important to understand those things at the start at the start of the process you don't want to limit yourself with trying to be too precise and gravity sketch is an amazing tool to be able to use that where you can just get a headset on start exploring in, in 3d you know i still start with 2d sketches just to get a feel and an idea but then mapping that out in in 3d in a very quick iterative way helps get a lot of people who may not have a you know creative background who may have like a, a key voice in the decision making to get on that journey um sooner so you're all aligned and have the same expectation yeah and i mean that you know that it's actually alluding to one of the questions i want to ask you so that's perfect like you were talking about how when you're thinking about solidworks or rhino that's more of like a final polished product right you're looking at exact proportions and all of these things which like you know you can re-import something like one of those files into gravity sketch but that's not the whole point of it right and when people think of a sketch they normally think of 2d and like you're saying you're still starting and doing a 2d sketch and then moving to another sketch that you're actually building within gravity sketch that just kind of allows you to communicate your idea obviously in 3d but a little bit more baked out right and so i'm kind of curious like how has 3d collaboration changed the way that you're sketching and working with your peers and things like that yeah um it's it's a great question and, and actually there's there's two ways that it kind of affects it so you know the, the first one as i mentioned already is um enabling the, the entire team who aren't necessarily designers to actually visualize the initial idea at an earlier stage um, in the process. And the second one is being actually able to create 3D iterations along with your tech backs to help share with vendors so and factories so they have a better understanding of your design intent. Um, so turning up to like a, a, a kickoff design review right at the first uh, stage of the process with some ideas you've been working on off brief in the background already appearing in, in 3D and even to the stage where you can actually have a 3D print to take to your initial kickoff um, is, is really valuable. 
and even if that's not going down the right path for, for everybody, it, there's a lot of scope to be able to amend that earlier on and just have that expectation of everyone on board. Yeah. And, you know, that's one of the, that that's just something that's super interesting to hear you say, because, you know, one of the things I hear all the time when I'm talking to people is like, you know, I don't want anyone in my process earlier. Like then it gets muddy. They mess with my, you know, design intent that takes away some of the integrity and my creativity. But what you're saying is that by having this 3D model for your first iteration and first review, you're actually able to go and kind of sell your idea and get more buy into that idea leading up to the final product with some of like your marketers or your factory partners and things like that. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, from my experience anyway, you've, you've got to be open as a designer at the, at the start of the process. Um, you know, I do understand the, the, the point around, you know, wanting to not anyone to mess with your idea until you get to a certain um, point to share it. But to kind of counteract that, you know, you're more likely to win buy-in from everyone around you um, if everyone feels as, as part of that process. It doesn't mean to say that you just say yes to what everyone wants. Like you still naturally have like a healthy debate about what you want to push as a designer versus commercial or, or marketing or even, you know, development as well. Um, but your best chance of success in any product design is everyone fighting the same corner right everyone on that journey together um because if you protect your idea and it goes too far down the line it is very difficult right to get to get everyone on board and also you need to be open to that that feedback you know something which you'd love to push might not be as commercial for the you know for the kind of end, end consumer that the brand is trying to push so you really do need to be on that journey at the start yeah. And I mean, it makes total sense, right? Like you're, you're ironing out all those details and getting a ton of alignment from the start. And like, especially when you're working with other brands, like, you know, partnering, like that also helps you set expectations with them, right? You're able to share these ideas and really sell them on a, while it is your idea and your design, it's also like ours. And they're coming as a unified front when you're getting to that final review and actually selling this as an everyone's idea because they're bought in. And so, you know, I just love that perspective and kind of way you're talking about it. Um, one of the other things you just hinted on that um, I'm hearing a lot in footwear specifically is the 3D printing aspect. And, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of designers who can just spend, you know, a day getting their first sketch together in Gravity Sketch and then actually 3D print that thing. Is that kind of a little bit of what you're doing around that? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it, the so so Pendant Brands has, has a few offices in the UK um, and the Canterbury brand, uh, which we're talking about today, is, is based in Nottingham. Um, same same as Speedo as well, the international license for, for Speedo. Oh, cool. um, and they have a 3D printing facility, which they use as part of their kind of uh, goggle design in, in swimming, particularly with, with Speedo. So obviously being part of that multi-brand environment, um, I've been able to reach out to those guys and say, look, I've, I've got a 3D file I created in, in Gravity Sketch. I've got a design kickoff happening in, in two weeks time. Will okay. you help me with your expertise? Because this is already part of your process to actually 3D yeah. print, not just an, an outsole, but an upper as well. So to have like a 3D printing facility in house is, is really valuable. Obviously not yeah. everyone is, is in that position, um, but the fact that you, you can bring a, a model to the, to your design review one or even design review two um, and actually be able to share something on the table when you haven't even discussed like tech packs or going out to the vendor um, is, is incredibly uh, valuable. And again, taking everyone on that journey with you. I've actually found that the earlier I share my ideas, the more excitement I get from uh, people outside with design that are part of that decision making process. So actually it's been yeah. really uh, productive from that perspective. No, that's really awesome to hear. And like, it almost sounds like in a lot of ways, and this goes back to like where you were talking about and like during COVID taking that time to invest and learn this process because you saw it as a way to, you know, kind of elevate your design process, elevate your brand, set yourself apart from other designers, you know, um, like I imagine like, you know, if you're going to your first design review and a peer just has a, you know, a 2D sketch and you're coming with a 3D sketch, a model, a 3D printed version of this boot, like you're really kind of on the edge there, really having your boot selected to be the one that's made, right? It seems to make a lot of sense. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice. Just one more thing, Tyler, on, on that comment yeah. is, that, you know, when I designed this boot, it was 
you know, around 2020 to 2021. So multiple lockdowns as well. So yeah. a lot of it was done remotely um, and with limitations of, of yeah. being as well to get samples sent. So that's another thing which is which is kind of really helped. No, that is really awesome. Yeah, it sounds like it's definitely you know, really helped you a lot in your design process. And so I think from there, like, you know, I'm getting a lot of uh, ask in the comments here. Maybe we want to go ahead and just like go through some of your process in Gravity Sketch. We have a uh, Brett here who's one of our design consultants at Gravity Sketch. He's put together, um, I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with this. It's a collaboration room. It's one of the features in Gravity Sketch that actually allows you to almost make a presentation of your work, right? It's a way, it's just another way. And you actually don't have to have a VR headset for this, which is really nice. As you can see, this is Gravity Sketch that we're sharing right here on the computer. So if maybe your boss doesn't, yeah, see, AJ gets it. Collab rooms are awesome. Yeah. So like if, you know, your boss doesn't have a VR headset, but you want to maybe do your design review, you can actually just pull this up and they can take a look at it right here. And so Brett's going to really, uh, you know, Toby could do this. I could do this, but Brett's going to do it so we can continue to talk about it here a little bit. But yeah, this is, um, Toby, you want to tell us a little bit about this rugby, rugby boot here that you've designed that's in market and so beautiful? Yeah, I appreciate that, Tyler. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is the Phoenix Genesis Elite uh, rugby boot. So, um, again, as I mentioned, it was designed through 2020 to 21 and obviously developed through that kind of process, um, released um, kind of at the back end of, of last year. So um, what I'd like to start with is 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 the problem, right, is, is with the brief. And, with you know, again, with my experience, it's the more clarity that you have um, at the start and the more specific you are about answering a consumer need um, rather than overwhelming yourself by uh, do, trying to take on too many different insights. This one was so valuable um, to us to the fact that 79% of rugby players want to wear rugby specific boots. And I know that sounds really obvious, right? Because it's, it's called rugby and you want to wear the boot that's designed for it. Um, but the situation that, that rugby's in is that, you know, although there are rugby specific boots out there, there's not that much choice. And a lot of players are turning to football boots um, to actually use that within rugby. Now, the main difference there is you have up to 20 kilograms uh, more force going through the boot in rugby than you typically do in football. And that's from the way that the players are moving um, the stature of a lot of the players on average. Um, so really, it was just going after that key insight in rugby to make something very specific for rugby players. Yeah. And, you know, that's one of the things that's really interesting. And I mean, I feel like this is very common when you talk about industrial design, right? You were starting with the problem. What do we need to solve here? But then Gravity Sketch was also allowing you to figure out like exactly how to like make this thing come to life and still make it a very polished, cool product, right? Um, so yeah, and here's an interesting question right here. Like, how do you prefer to get client or user requirements? Like when you're talking about the 79%, like where are y'all getting those today? Yeah. I mean, you know, the way that we worked at Canterbury is actually going straight to the players themselves. So, you know, the, the, in the past we have used different marketing agencies and things like that, but the, mo the best feedback that I've been able to get, um, to influence what we do is going out to the local community, going out to see local players, um, both the men's game and, and the women's game, um, as well as start talking to the elite players as well to see what differences that the players at the top of the game want. But, you know, you cannot ignore what the majority of the players want um, in the grassroots game as well. You know, for, for sure. Yeah. Um, and so actually getting out there yourself um, and, and talking to players directly is, is the best kind of feedback you can get. Yep. And, um, you know, it's really balancing that, like, to your point, like, what are the top people need for performance? But then also, I mean, everyone cares about the performance that they're playing, right? But then also, what are their needs as well? So it's balancing all of that. So no, this is really cool to see. And yeah, I think, Brett, if you want to hit to the next slide, we can go ahead and do that as well. So yeah, as y'all can see, these are called viewpoints. So you set these up beforehand, and it just kind of moves you here. And yes, AJ, so these are all imported images that came from somewhere else right now, but we're going to have some actual sketches and other really cool things in here as well. But yeah, Toby, you want to tell us a little bit more about this as well? Because I think this is a really cool part when it's talking about your design and your design process. Yeah, sure. Um, so obviously we've gone into detail on, on the problem and I think it's it's fitting to go straight to the solution right before we kind of get into the, the sketch work. So yeah. Um, you know, using a lot of engineering principles and, and knowledge in footwear, we uh, developed uh, an innovation called the Flight Beam, um, which is something which is more powerful 
and has greater stability than other other boots on the market and also better than our previous boots. So this flight beam design, which you can see is, is the red area in the center of the boot, um, balances longitudinal bending stiffness and torsional resistance. So essentially that's increasing your energy return, so your, your power, your explosive power, but also keeping that, um, keeping your foot from twisting out, I guess is, is the best way to put it. Um, so in order to kind of achieve this design, as you can see from the image here and, and the reference on, on the left uh, there, um, this is very organic, right? This is something that's very, very difficult to communicate in 2D. Um, you can be great with, you, with your shading, your hand shading and, and everything, but to be able to get that kind of full 360 um, view was you know, really unique to be able to get there in Gravity Sketch quicker. Not only did we uh, design this um, in Gravity Sketch, we were also then able to use that, that model created to actually do some mechanical, um, sorry, some digital testing before we went to mechanical testing. Um, and the digital testing was able to look at the stresses and strains, uh, strains of different parts of the boot and actually help inform um, before investing in any tooling or sampling um, our best chance of success there. Um, so as you can see here, there's a few sketches of that um, process within, within Gravity Sketch, um, looking at the base of the outsole and then um, into the upper design here as well. Yeah, and um, it's just, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, no worries. I was just going to give a little bit of context around um, the Wales captain, Justin Tipperick. Um, so this is one of our elite rugby players that we worked with very closely um, with this project. So again, talking about the kind of insight that, that we, we were gathering. Um, yeah, this was kind of our, our top target for that. Nice. Yeah. And it's just, you know, really cool to see all of this. And as y'all can see, we're kind of moving through just a bunch of different views here. So you can see a lot of different ways that you can showcase Toby's work. But, you know, it's just I, I'm kind of curious, like we were talking a little bit earlier about bringing people into the process earlier. Right. And, you know, thinking about a tool like this and the way that you could do things like this in Colab Room, like how do you see that changing the way that you're really working with other designers, your boss, your partner brands, modelers, factory partners, like all of those types of things, right? Yeah, you know, similar to some of the things we've touched upon already is, is just the, the the clarity and expectation of the project. So in terms of managing that project from concept to reality, um, everyone knows what what the product is that we're, we're trying to create. Um, in terms of sharing that with with factories and, and vendors, the, the 3D models are there to help communicate different uh, contouring um, yeah. because otherwise it would be like hundreds of cross sections that I'd have to create in a 2D tech bag. So that's yeah. been massively helpful for that. So not only that, it's just cutting down a lot of time for you, right? Like in general, because you're not having to do all these tech packs and other things and back and forth because it's, you know, your design intent and integrity is already there on the screen for others to see. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, do we want to talk a little bit about, you know, some of these other pieces too, or maybe jump into your sketches yeah. here? Yeah, here we go. We I think we should jump into the, uh, yeah. to the sketching if that's all right. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of a lot of people are probably waiting to see that. So let's yeah, I think they are too. So you know, it makes sense to lead it there. So, um, oh, really quick while we're getting there too, is your texturing done in Gravity Sketch? I I'm gonna let you answer, but yeah, texturing. So um, yeah, I mean, I use a, I use a few different tools. So you know, I'll take a model and I'll render that up in Keyshot, for example, um, or I, sometimes I enhance some of the screenshots. I'll take that into Sketchbook Pro to kind of add a little bit more more detail on that as well. So, I guess yeah. what you see here um, that, that kind of Brett's going through is is just some of the kind of rough two D sketches that that I imported in to kind of build that that model around. Yep. Yeah, no, it's really cool. And so this is just kind of showing like a lot of your sketching process, right? It started over there in the two D. We have the foot, we have the boot here. Yeah, I would love to hear a little bit just about like kind of how you worked through this and what it looked like as we're going through it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so uh, what you saw there on, on the left was the um, was the last uh, shoe last data that we um, were able to obtain from our vendor that I could actually import directly into Gravity Sketch. Um, so obviously there's that trade-off between wanting to have freedom of expression and not being too specific, but where you can, if you've got your actual last that you're going to use um, 
for the shoe that you're creating, then that gives you a better chance of accuracy um, earlier on. So we started with the last, I sketched around that, mapping the 2D sketches, um, you know, kind of cross section like this to try and yeah. uh, balance that as much as I could. Um, and then you do the your kind of wire frames, which you guys would have just seen. Um, and then going on to your surfacing, um, which you can kind of see from that, that exploded view. Yeah, this exploded view, I think, is just really cool, too, where you're able to actually, like, deconstruct the shoe, right? And, like, I imagine, and like I said, I'm not a footwear designer, so I'd love to hear a little bit more, like, what are the benefits of having a view like this, where you're actually able to break it apart like this and really showcase it, like, kind of on top of each other? You can, I mean, in my mind, like, I can almost see how it fits together, right? But I'm curious, like, what what is your reasoning for doing this and a little bit about that? Yeah, I think it just helps show the depth behind the design. Um, you know, quite often you don't get an opportunity to almost see the, the inner workings of something. And I think particularly when you're working with um, high performance products, um, it's, it is really interesting when you're talking to, you know, even, even customers or retailers to actually say, look, you know, this is all the engineering that's, that's inside this product. So it's not just how it looks on the outside. It's, it's got all that kind of performance and tech on the inside. Yeah, no, for sure. And then, I mean, you can see over here too, where it's actually on a model, which is really cool to see as well. Um, you know, I just, you know, it really gives an idea for kind of what, you know, you're working with here. Um, one of the questions around this as well is, um, so like, how are you adding the logos to your model um, when you're actually putting these in here? People are very curious. It seems like to know how you're doing that. So yeah, I mean, there is um, there is a function that you can import images. So I've actually imported that um, as like a, a flat yeah. image. Now, the, the reason why there's no box or background behind it is because I uh, created like a transparent uh, PNG file in, in Photoshop. Um, so obviously, if, if you're able to, to do that, um, yeah. cut off the box around the back and then it's just placed in the same way you'd import one of your reference images. Um, yeah. You can even change the color as well on the color wheel, which which I found whilst, whilst doing this, which was great. Yeah. I mean, it's just so impressive to see it like this. Like it really speaks to, you know, the intricacy of how you're able to express your idea um, when you're talking about it this way. And we're actually getting to see it in this way. So, you know, a few more questions. So like what are some of the ways you're managing dimensions, and material thickness um, when you're doing designs like this? Yeah. So, um, you know, again, kind of working on this 3D model that you see here, this was actually uh, done at the back end of 2020. So Gravity Sketch has actually moved on um, a lot within the past uh, three years. So typically the way I would do it now would, would be using what's called the Thicken tool. Um, so yeah. when that came out, I, <laughs> I was so relieved to see that, right? Because when you've got so many materials and layer it, layering within footwear, um, whereas here, it was a little bit of a long process to kind of go from a 2D yeah. plane on each material to start pulling all that out. So, you know, the, the amount of time it took me to create this um, piece of footwear versus what I can do now. First thing is obviously having more experience in the tool. But secondly, the, the way that Gravity Sketch has kind of listened to the people using the tool and then gone and created actual... Um, I don't know, different ways of, of doing things uh, within Gravity Sketch to kind of answer those problems. You know, I can design so much faster with with some of the new kind of tools that, that are now available. Yeah, no, I love that. So, you know, we're getting really close to time here. We're getting quite a few questions. Um, we can keep going through those and go a little bit over, I think. But, you know, I just want to, Toby, is there anything else you want to add around this process, your design process, your thoughts here as we're kind of wrapping up just to make sure you've got a chance to say everything you want to say? Yeah, I guess the last thing would be um, with uh, with with the tooling, right? With the with the outsole design. So, again, like this, there's you know lo loads of detail with it within this one. So, what I've learned from this process is just how to cor correctly map out your geometry in the most efficient way as, as, as possible. So, since going on from from this one, I've got a lot more efficient um, with creating that that kind of detail. Again, some of the new tools that have come in, um, but yeah, happy now to answer any questions. I've I've noticed a few few coming in, um, so yeah, um, far away. Yeah, all right. I'm just going to start going through these, and y'all, there's a ton in here, so there's no way we're going to be able to get to them. So apologies if we don't get to your question. If you want to email hello at gravitysketch.com. 
I'm happy to, you know, field those questions, get them to Toby or the right person at Gravity Sketch to get them answered as well. So, um, all right, let's just start jumping in here. So is your final rendering done in Gravity Sketch and how do you map out texture geometry? So I think we've touched on this a little bit, but I don't know if you want to share any other thoughts around that. Yeah, so um, the final renders that, that I'll do, in fact, you can you can see one here just in the top left of, of the screen. Yeah, that one. Um, so this one, um, which obviously doesn't have the logos on them yet because uh, it was a little bit earlier in the process. Um, but in terms of texturing, this is um, from Keyshot. So everything you see there in terms of geometry and proportions was imported from, from Gravity Sketch. And then in Keyshot was where I was able to drop in the materials, um, the lighting, um, and, and things like that. Um, obviously, you, you've, it is really um, user friendly to start putting uh, logos um, in Keyshot as well. Uh, and I love using the displacement um, as well for 3D molding and logos. So I think it goes back to your point, Tyler, at the start when you said Gravity Sketch isn't a replacement for these other um, tools. You actually work together with them as part of your workflow. And I think this is a good example of that. Yeah, no. And I mean, I couldn't agree more with you. You know, at the end of the day, we're here to help designers communicate their ideas more effectively. So, you know, bringing a rendering like this back into Gravity Sketch, you can share it using something like Colab or take it out or however you want to do that. Right. Share it in VR. Like that's really our goal here is just to help designers, you know, preserve that design intent. So I love to hear that. All right. So another good one here. So like what's your time frame on making models? How long does it take you to create a project like this? Yeah. Um... So, again, with the experience, um, you know, the first time doing it, it took a lot longer. The second time, a little bit quicker. Third time, a bit quicker. Um, yeah. But what I would say is, is in terms of creating the, the wireframe, um, you could get quite a good, accurate uh, wireframe in, in under an hour. Um, in terms of the surfacing, that's a little bit more detail orientated. But there yeah. are some yeah. tricks that you can do with the volume tool, which can at least kind of bulk out the inside of that if you want to get those um, quick approvals from your sketches. Um, so I guess a process now, if I haven't got any other work on, I could I could do that within five days, right? Because also I am a bit of a perfectionist, so I do find it hard to let go of the smallest of details, which I'm always trying to challenge myself to uh, kind of move away from. Um, but I'd say give yourself a solid five days if you don't have anything else, um, you know, happening yeah. around that time. I mean, five days, that sounds kind of quick. What was it like before that, just out of curiosity? Yeah, um, I mean, my daughter was born, right, at that time. So I'd just yeah. become a dad. So I actually designed a lot of this um, overnight. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. yeah, so I had to, yeah, a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, looking after my daughter and that. So it's difficult to know exactly how it took, but it was a few weeks. Yeah, for sure. No, it makes sense. All right. So I think we've got time for one more question here before we wrap up. So I think this is a really good one. So shoe designs are asymmetric through the center of the footwear. Symmetric models are easier to model with mirrors. Um, you know, how does or does Gravity Sketch ease your work without symmetry? Yeah, um, so I, I think it depends on um, the purpose of the project. So if you want to communicate um, a 3D concept, then that's all about design intent. So I would say it doesn't necessarily have to be um, asymmetric, right? If you want to get a very quick um, concept uh, to be able to share. Um, obviously, the later down you go, you go the pro process, you're going to want to get that that um, shoe looking more more realistic, particularly if you start going into um, tech packing. Um, yeah. So, I would always start with the mirror tool to get that kind of initial feedback earlier on in the process. Albeit that the shoe is not asymmetric at that point, however, it is very very um, simple way to amend the I guess you'd say the medial side of the shoe. Um, in time for your for your next review, um, all you need to do is is bake the geometry as it, as, it, as it's called. Have your last um, set up there and just start pulling the material around your last. Yeah, for yeah. sure. That's a great answer as well. And you know we're over, already over time. So again, anybody, if you have any questions, I've dropped it in the chat here a couple times. Um, hello at gravitysketch.com and. You know, also, we have that nice social media contest going back at the beginning. So if you tag us on any of our social networks, uh, you'll enter a chance to win a swag pack. But, you know, I just want to thank you all, one, for taking the time to join and let you know you'll be getting the recording within 24 hours. But then also just 
you know, thank you, Toby, for just all this, your time, this amazing work, all the sharing your insights and your design process. Like I know this has been one of the most fun conversations I've gotten to have like this. And so I just really wanted to thank you for sharing this with everyone that everyone online seems to have really enjoyed it. You're getting lots of hearts, questions, all this great stuff. So thank you, Toby. And yeah, we really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so much for kind of giving me the opportunity to, to share my experience with Gravity uh, Sketch. Um, you know, massively appreciate uh, all the kind of kind comments from, from everyone who's joined today. And as you mentioned, Tyler, you know, any questions that, that you guys get, just fire them over to me. I'm more than happy to answer them. Cool. Well, yeah. cheers. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And thank you, Brett, for uh, driving this presentation for us. And everyone have a good rest of your day.